Hey, what's up? David with Brazos Valley Strength. So today's video, I wanted to dive into the concept of leg drive and hopefully come up with some general things that apply to pretty much every lifter. And then from there, get some specific things that lifters can apply to the, their style of lifting and get more out of their bench press. So what we need to do right away is just talk about what leg drive is and what it isn't. So I think people have a concept, especially earlier on, that your legs are actually acting on the bar in your bench press, and that's simply not true. Right, your legs don't, they're not connected to the bar in any way, so they can't actually create force into the bar. But they certainly can limit the force that you're actually producing. So the best way to think about leg drive in the bench press, broad way, or broadly here, is the same way that we would think about bracing in the squat, right? If your, if your squat, or if your brace falls apart in the squat, your legs can't transfer force in the barbell, you fail the lift. So it certainly can end up being a, a devastating error and, and end up making you miss a lift because of that, uh, that inability to produce force from the muscles that are acting on the bar. But there's probably going to be diminishing returns. Making your brace infinitely better in the squat is not going to do much more uh, than, you know, obviously making your legs stronger. So with the bench press, it's going to be the same way with leg drive. So your legs can certainly make you fail lifts. If you just get relaxed and fall apart, you'll have the same errors that you would with squatting if you fell apart with your brace, but there's gonna be diminishing returns. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't focus on it though. Your legs will certainly be able to allow you to get in a better arch, get more power off your chest, we'll kind of dive into that, uh, and maintain your position and allow your upper body muscles to actually put as much force in the bar as they possibly can. But during the bench press when it's going, if your legs are doing what they should be, you're not going to be by cueing legs, legs, or something like that. You're not gonna get more into the bar um, by, by pushing more with your legs. But depending on lifting styles, there, there can be you know, arch widths, grip widths, there can be a, a wide variety of what your legs should actually be doing in the bench press to get the most out of it. So what we wanna do is kind of look at different types of lifters, um, grip widths, arch height, those kind of things, and hopefully come up with a way to determine what style of leg drive you should be using. So first of all, the, the purpose of leg drive across the board with, with any lifter is to help maintain tension in your body and certainly create an arch. Your legs, without using your legs, you'll never be able to maintain an arch in your bench press. So together, the weight of the bar pushing down into your bodies, pinning your shoulders down on the bench, plus your legs driving back at your shoulders help create the big arch. Now, we've seen with many, many lifters where you place your feet, how you know stance width, those kind of things can vary widely from person to person. Now, height matters, all sorts of things, being just you know, comfortable with it, you're not gonna be able to get in the same person as somebody uh, you know, half your size or those kind of things. Um, especially we can see like sometimes smaller women are able to get their feet way further back behind bigger guys. So those things will, will really determine it. But we can look at somebody like Sean Noriega who's maybe one of the best bench pressers in the world, uh, has a, a very different style, especially with his legs, where his feet are way, way out in front of him and doesn't get much pop off of his chest. So is he using leg drive? Absolutely yes. Because what your legs should be doing in creating the arch is being able to drive your body back at the rack, to be able to push your ribs up over your shoulders or create that feeling that your body is being rolled over your shoulders once it's pinned down at the bench. So with Sean, having his feet way out in front of him allows him to push horizontally across the bench towards the rack and maintain that tension and hopefully maintain his really big arch. Now, somebody like me, I don't have as big of an arch. Uh, I use much more of a sinking technique. When my feet are out in front of me, if I sink the bar into my chest, I might get a little bit loose with that. My feet slip every time, I can't maintain tension and things collapse. So why is there that big difference? And uh, uh, so much of it comes down into our different styles. Grip widths, how hard we're touching, those kind of things, just the style in general. So one of the things, one of the most important factors with how you should be implementing leg drive comes down to how you are most effective with the bar touching your chest.
And what I mean by that is how soft the touch is. So somebody like Sean, when he's doing like tempo reps or spoto presses, or just in general, very, very soft touches on his chest, benches extremely well. But we've seen that create issues in competition just because of how soft that, that touch point matters. Going, he's, he's had some difficulty getting press commands from judges because it's, it may be floating at times off of his chest. So those little millimeters make a tremendous difference for Sean. So for him, relaxing his legs in any way would, would be extremely detrimental to his bench press. So for him, leg drive means actively driving with his legs the entire time to maintain his arch as big as he can and help reduce range of motion and create stability in his upper body. For me, leg drive is almost the exact opposite uh, in a lot of ways. I still, it still obviously helps me create an arch, but my grip is a bit closer. I, I don't grip full width. I'm also taller than Sean and all of that. Um, but my finger is, I use my ring finger just inside of the ring. So I'm not at max width. And from there, I get a tremendous amount of benefit with my bench press of sinking the bar into my chest. So with that in mind, for me, I relax my legs a little bit down at the bottom. I, I may, I may relax 30% or something about of, of how much leg drive that I'm actually creating. So when I unwrap the bar, when I'm getting set, I let's, let's say I'm at about 90% of the full force that I create, could create before the rep. When I lower the rep and let it get into my chest, I'm relaxing a little bit, not 100%. That, that, that's one of the big things that still matters here is I have to maintain enough tension in my legs to be able to keep the stability that I created in my upper body continue to be pushing into the bar, but relaxing enough to let the bar rebound off of my chest. Once I get the press command, once I'm ready to press, I can add back that, let's say if I'm at 90% and I relax 30%, I go to 100%. So from there, pushing as hard as I can with my legs to help propel the bar off of my chest and flare my elbows, get the bar moving backwards and, and those kind of things. So there is a, a huge difference in the way that we're using a leg drive, but they can both be very, very effective. So when you're looking at your own technique, I think the things that you need to look at are how, how much more range of motion can you reduce by using constant leg drive through the entirety of the lift? And are you stronger with certain variations? Let's say like a spoto press, um, especially when it's done very closely to chest. Um, tempo bench presses or, or just any, any kind of soft touch, uh, eccentric emphasized variation. If you're significantly stronger or noticeably stronger on those, then it may be worthwhile for you to, to use the more constant leg drive and not worry about creating speed and pop off your chest. This usually works a lot better for wider grip bench pressers where, you know, we just are seeing that, uh, the reduction in range of motion helps significantly more than any increases in power. Um, on the other side of that, if you're generally a closer grip bench presser, more of a flatter back bench presser, you may consider using more of the, the sinking bench press along with a little bit of pop from your legs. Now, it's important when you're thinking about that, when you're using the pop from your legs, that things need to be driving back. I mentioned with Sean that everything is driving back towards the rack to help keep his shoulders penned. But for us also, that's the same concept creating that arch, maintaining that tension, keeping my shoulders in a stable position. But also when I'm driving, I need to move the bar backwards and pop up off the chest many times will lead to the butt coming up. And if your butt is coming up, there's a few things you can do. Most of the time, a wider stance, sometimes toes angled out. Those kind of things really help feel like your butt is a, is a bit more pinned to the bench. Um, but many, many times it's about just how you're implementing the, the press off of your, off of your chest. We need to make sure that we're pressing backwards, not feeling like we're just trying to pop it up. So with everyone, there's going to be some individual differences here. Um, I think with, with bench press, the being able to understand what the concept of leg drive is really going to where you're going to get the most benefit from your bench press really matters. So don't just feel like you're driving super hard with your legs is always going to be affecting the, the weight of the bar or, or actually acting into the bar. Just like with squatting, if we're bracing harder, just infinitely putting all of our eggs in that basket, we may be missing a lot of the, the other concepts we could be applying, you know, making sure that we're getting our legs stronger and moving well in those positions. So, uh, leg draw, leg drive is not going to be, uh, not going to have infinite returns, but certainly 
based on the way that you lift, it really can make a huge difference. So anyway, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.